This video will cover the topic finding the rate or time in a word problem on continuous exponential growth or decay. Before we get started, can we go over what continuous exponential growth or decay means? Sure. First, let's look at the general formula for problems of this type. A equals P times E raised to the RT. T represents the time difference from the starting point and R represents the constant rate of growth. E is the natural logarithm base also known as Euler's number. P represents the principal or initial amount of things and A represents the final amount of things. Thus the starting point would be t equals zero since e to the zero power is one at t equals zero the principal amount is equal to the final amount. Continuous growth means that the rate is positive and continuous decay means that the rate is negative. Okay, I think I'm starting to understand. In a decay problem, a should be less than p, and in a growth problem, a should be greater than p. Can we do an example of a continuous exponential growth? Sure. Let's look at the example problem. The number of bacteria in a certain population increases according to a continuous exponential growth model with a growth rate parameter of 6.5% per hour. How many hours does it take for the size of the sample to double? In this problem, we are given the rate of growth and we are asked to solve for t. Remember that a percent is equal to a decimal times 100, so we need to divide 6.5 by 100 before substituting it for r. Lastly, we need to round to the nearest hundredths for this problem. According to the formula, don't we also need a and p in order to solve for t? Good question. In this problem, however, we want the time when the sample has doubled. Thus, when the original amount, p, becomes twice its original amount, 2p. Substituting these values into our equation reads 2p equals p times e raised to the point 065t. Since there is a p on both sides of the equation, we can divide both sides by p to reduce the equation to a single variable, right? Exactly! Dividing both sides by p results in 2 equals e raised to the point 065t. Now, we can take the natural logarithm of both sides. Since the natural logarithm of e equals the power e was raised to. Our equation now reads ln of 2 equals 0 0.065t. Isolating t by dividing both sides by 0 0.065 yields t equals ln of 2 divided by 0 0.065. Inputting this fraction into the Alex calculator results in t equals 10 0.6638 and more decimals on. But since the problem asks for rounding to the nearest hundredth, our final answer is t equals 10.66 hours. Okay, this is making more sense now, but can we do an example of exponential decay just to be sure? Sure. One common usage of continuous exponential decay is to measure the half-life of a substance the time it takes for half of the original amount to decay into a material with a smaller atomic number. In this example, we will be using the same equation, a equals p times e raised to the rt. Since this equation is used to model all continuous exponential growth or decay. The mass of a radioactive substance follows a continuous exponential decay model with a decay rate parameter of 5% per day. Find the half-life of this substance, that is, 
the time it takes for one half of the original amount in a given sample of this substance to decay, rounding to the nearest hundredths. In this example, R is equal to negative 0.05 because the substance is losing material at a rate of 0.05 per day, right? Exactly. And since we are looking for the point where there is one half of the substance remaining, we can say that A equals one half P, and thus our equation reads one half P equals P times E raised to the negative 0 0.05 T. Next, we divide both sides by P to cancel it out, right? Yes. Then, we take the natural log of both sides to result in ln of one half equals negative 0 0.05 T. Solving for t yields t equals ln of one half divided by negative 0 0.05. Then inputting this fraction into the Alex graphing calculator yields t equals 13.86 days. I think I am starting to understand this topic now. We begin by determining the ratio of a to p if specific numbers are not given. Then we substitute the ratio for a thus allowing us to cancel p, and leaving us with either r or t as the unknown. We substitute the rest of the given information into the equation, take the natural logarithm of both sides, and input this value into the Alex graphing calculator, remembering to round to the nearest hundredth place. That's right. 